Hey guys, Tumsi here. <coughs> Happy New Year. How's everyone doing? Thank you guys for joining. <laughs> nice weather talk right there. Winter, huh? I wonder how that feels. <laughs> no, but actually, even here in Singapore, it's very cold right now. Well, in Singapore standards, that is. Because we actually got, I think, I think we will be getting at the coldest probably 23 or 22 degrees Celsius. And that's super cold in these standards. So, yeah, it's harder and harder to wake up. <laughs> Just want to stay in bed longer. Hey, hey Scotsman, 15 months. Goodness. First as well. <laughs> How's your fancy second monitor? Now you can watch and train at the same time. Awesome. Perfect. Glad you made it here. Happy New Year, everybody. Hey, Tom. Negative two there. Oh my goodness. And it's snowing already. Uh, that sounds more like it. How about for you, Patrick? How's the weather there? In London, with date, it's two degrees. Oh yeah, but it was 16 a few days ago, goodness. Now <laughs> that's fluctuation. Here it mostly fluctuates, I guess, 2 or 3 degrees in a day. We don't have those sudden jumps. 18, and now negative 2. <laughs> goodness. Oh my goodness, hey adventurer. Happy New Year, man. How are things? <clears throat> Happy New Year and hopefully more train stream. <laughs> yeah, yes, I hope so too. We'll see. <laughs> Soon, TM. Goodness. So today, guys, we are... Well, I was trying to find an excuse because I wanted to fly in our VA again. So if you guys didn't know, we actually have a VA, a virtual airline in On Air. On Air is a paid... Um, a subscription service, I could say. It adds an economy to the sim. It's compatible with MSFS, with Xplane, with multiple simulators. <clears throat> so you get the chance to add economy, you know, uh, level up, earn money, buy and maintain aircraft, hire employees and whatnot, all those things. And take some nice fancy jobs and try to maximize the pay based on the uh, the jobs available, things like this. And there is this nice virtual airline um, feature. For me, this is the biggest feature in On Air. Because it's possible to group together and have like-minded people work towards the same goal. So we had the Clumsy Airlines VA in On Air for quite some time. Maybe, maybe more than a year now. But recently in On Air, they got a massive change um, in the economy system. I think basically they made it harder. Tom was asking a while ago, what is challenge mode? Because we are now in challenge mode. If you look at this. Um, <clears throat> so current mode, challenging. Oh, it's challenging, not challenge. Okay. But... There's now a classic mode and challenging mode. And by default, challenging mode is the, the, the norm. And classic is only for those old users. It basically makes everything harder even. So you really have to think about the loads and try to do the maths, you know. So for those who are really craving for a, like a full-blown economy system, this might be your thing. Because like, for example, there are times when I just want to fly. I don't want to think about the, the hassles of, am I going to make a profit or not? Am I, what is the maximum way? Uh, do I have fuel? Do I have to maintain my aircraft and things like this? Um, that's for this on air. If you just want to fly, Sky Park is probably more your, up your alley. 
for me personally, my 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 mood depends. My mood varies, and sometimes I'm in the mood to really try and uh, plan it out in detail, and that's when on air comes into play. So with the, with the advent of this challenging mode, the VA was stuck in classic mode, and we couldn't get new people in. So we decided with New Year, fresh start, to start a new VA. So we liquidated the old VA, sold off all the planes, re- released all, all the rents, distributed all the money on the VA, and then we created a new one, which is in challenging mode with the new economy system. And we are starting basically from scratch. So if we look at the aircraft available here, we only have three at the moment. We have minimal number of people in the VA. If you look, I think we only have four people right now or five. Yeah. So me, uh, Gruntworks, Downtown, Mesa, and Ising. And then the others will probably join back in. But they, they, we, we cleaned it up basically. And we're starting from scratch. Uh, Air Barchetta, I'm not sure because they're not in Discord. So I cannot accept them yet. Otherwise, it would be hard to coordinate. But yes, if you are looking for a VA in on air, you can join this one. Uh, we don't really have hard uh, requirements, although we are trying to keep it safer right now. Starts low because we're not yet sure how the new economy works. So this stream is to get to know the new economy a bit more. Let's try it out ourselves. So you can join the VA Clums is the uh, the the IKEO, IKEO code? no the, the company code for the VA. So clumsy without the Y, basically. Hey, Bal, okay. Can I call you okay? How you can get the MSFS 2020 as realistic as it gets? Well, it depends what kind of realism you're looking for. Ah, the flight dynamics. Yeah, yeah, the flight dynamics. Um, Actually, I just played X-Plane maybe 30 minutes ago. I, I installed it. I loaded up uh, the TBM 900 from Hot Start, downloaded the Orbex True Earth and whatnot. Tried loading it. It does feel different. Uh, I'm not sure which I like better, but definitely the graphics side MSF is like, it's like years away. But yeah, the systems explain is still uh, ahead of that. As realistic as a commercial grade flight sim. Ah, so are you into flying airliners? Unfortunately, with MSFS, airliners are not big yet. So you'll probably have to stay in X plane if ever. <clears throat> but hopefully, this year will be the year we get some nice airliners in uh, MSFS. The best we have at the moment is CRJ, I believe. Yes, exactly, Scotsman, exactly. Virtual trucking company, virtual airline. So it's the same concept, but this one is a bit more fleshed out because there are jobs you can take in the app itself. Because in in a, in a VTC, right, the, the jobs are still generated in-game and you just sync it with the VTC system. Here, the actual job is in the VA. Hey, Kevo! Happy New Year. Yes, glad you made it. Thanks for joining. Yes, doing great, doing great. So we're starting off our uh, climb here in the in this VA. So we'll see how it works. So first and foremost, let us go and look. We'll be flying the Kodiak 100 here in the Philippines. I'm currently in San Jose, Romeo Papa Uniform Hotel. Let's have a look at where that is in the map. If you're not familiar with the Philippines, let me show you how that looks. I'm actually from there. I was born and raised there. Although I did move to Singapore uh, a couple of years back. But yes, I still consider this my home. So this is where we are. This is the Philippines, right? In terms of where it is in the world, it's uh, kind of uh, north of Australia. Yes, I guess you could say that's the easiest reference point. And uh, specifically, we are right here in San Jose. I've never been here in real life. Yeah, I haven't been to many of these places, I'm ashamed to say, but at least virtually, I can go. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, um, the, in terms of realism, I think it's getting there. If you're into flying GA aircraft, 
uh, it is getting better. We have the Just Flight Arrow, we have the Kodiak 100. Those are the two best uh, GA planes that I've seen in, in MSFS right now. I highly recommend those. It's not quite study level still, but it is definitely getting better and better with the flight dynamics, with the systems. A hey, Maxwell. Thanks for joining. Yes, I am from here. Yes, born and raised in the Philippines. <laughs> All right, so that's where we're starting. Where we'll get to, who knows? But uh, that all depends on the economy. So let's go and check. So with the Kodiak 100, let's go and look for jobs. Hey, Geek Squad. Happy New Year. How are things? You guys have school again? A380 in the game. Oh, yes. Same here. I have never flown a jumbo airliner in any sim yet, um, but hoping I get to fly one eventually because those must be just give you a real, real experience. But I'm, I'm waiting for a real high fidelity plane to re get released before I get into it. Just so because with with the with the bigger airliners, right, the the, the priority, the main focus are the systems, avionics. How the uh, FMS works and everything, all the different um, mechanisms, and they all have to be simulated. Otherwise, it's not the real experience. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. We'll get there eventually. I hope. So recently, on air had this added this thing, which is a good measure to determine if a job is profitable. It's not foolproof. It won't give you the full picture, but it's a good starting point. So this is a uh, this number is a um, value kind of computation. So based on the price per thousand pounds per nautical mile. So it looks at how much the job is paying, how far you have to fly, and then uh, how heavy that load is. And based on all all those factors, it co computes and checks: okay, is it worth it? what is the value of that job and so it gives a number to that so basically if you sort this descending you see the best paying um, in trucking this is like the price per distance kind of thing right. jumbo aircraft disaster <laughs> it wouldn't be far away from that probably a hey, larger happy new year man how are things going on your end Cessna CJ4, oh yes, the CJ4 is amazing, especially with the working title mod. I think that one has the best, um, well, now we have the G1000 NXI, but the CJ4 uh, has the best avionics so far in the sim. Airliners, helis, MFS, bush planes, and the seaplanes. So in terms of bush planes, Oh, you mean, yeah, yeah for x you focus on airliners and helis for mixed or flight sim, bush planes, and sea planes. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. <clears throat> so the sightseeing is really uh, unmatched in MSFS. The systems, it's getting there. Not quite yet, but getting there bit by bit. So let's see. We do have, and yes, On Air has some new missions, new types of missions since I last played it. We now actually have sightseeing missions as well here. So it's it's interesting how it does this because I, we're in the Philippines, which is, I would imagine this is not manually programmed in, but somehow they're able to find points of interest. Odiongan Landmark, Honasan Beach Resort, Boracay Pub Crawl. Hey, like that. Has anyone heard of Boracay here, guys? Used to be the number one go-to place. It's a beach in the Philippines. Boracay Pub Crawl. I like the sound of that. Alright, so there are three trips here, but it doesn't pay that well. Only 1,000? Because, oh, because it's only one passenger. I see, I see. Yeah. So in the, in the Kodiak, we can take up to six passengers, more or less. We do have six passengers in here, which pays a bit. Yeah, I think this one will do. I think this one will be good. Pays 5,000. We have six people on board. And it's, it's, a, it's a sightseeing thing. So if you look at the, the departure and the arrival airport, it's the same. Because we're basically going to the sightseeing 
place, White Beach Lodge in this case, will be circling around the area so that the sightseers can take photos and appreciate the views. We have to stay there for a minute or so, I think. 20 seconds, right? 20 seconds within 0.7 nautical miles. And then the, there are different ah, there are different clauses actually it's specified here. Below radar altitude of 600 feet. That's pretty low actually. That means above ground. 600 feet above ground. And stay 20 seconds around that area. This would be very easy if we had a helicopter, huh? Just hover there for 20 seconds. <coughs> Out of ground effect and whatnot. Okay, and then we go back. But that gives us a chance to roam the area. There are mountains here so we can, so we can see. And maybe we can also deliver stuff. I'm not sure if that's possible. Hmm. Yeah, might not, huh? Might not. Let's try it. Let's start small. So let's go with that. Six people. Um, five, six, thirty. Let's take that. Okay. How does that work? Ten gig updates. <laughs> 151 hours on Steam, but only three hours of flight time. Oh my goodness. Because of the updating process. Yikes. Yeah, my, my flight hours, on the other hand, have been doing good. Doing good. But yeah, what I realized in, when I went back to explain, you really need to do a, a ton of work to make it look nice, right? And make it feel nice. You have to load a lot. You have to download lots of plugins and whatnot. Um, not quite there yet. I think I'll be instead waiting for X-Plane 12 before I give it another go. Because X-Plane 11 when I flew it just really felt dated. And despite the wonderful plane systems, I've gotten so used to flying in MSFS conditions. All right, 50%, let's just load it up, 50-50. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Oh, and one more thing. Let me show you this amazing thing from from Gunny. One second, uh, there is a link. So what Gunny actually did, one of our VA managers and patrons here, he made a spreadsheet For the computation let me see if i can share this with you guys okay i think this is it um, right there yes so this is the spreadsheet and you can see different kinds of aircraft here and right, if you zoom in there is a fuel burn uh, how can you zoom in why does it not zooming in hmm. okay maybe it's locked but yes, the Kodiak 100, so you see different stats here, basically calculates how much it costs, if you're renting it out, how much that costs per hour, how much the fuel costs per hour, and then you kind of compute this, so based on the job that we got, so you can see the, the amount of detail, amount of um, planning you have to do. And sometimes I'm in the mood for this, right now, like right now, so this is, this is fun for me, but I know it's not for everybody, so... <laughs> Bear with me here. Uh, so let's see. This is 1140 pounds. This is going to pay. Um, where do you find that? One second. Let's let's load them up here. Okay. Let's go for pending jobs. This one. So it pays 5630, right? Uh, and the distance is. 139 because you go one direction and then go back so that's times two the original direction so 139 so if you plug this in here 139 and then we uh, plug in the pay 5630 ultimately we'll get this column here for profit so based on the rent the fuel and the time it will take to cover that distance and then that would be the expense right so this would be the expense right here cost per hour and cost this flight actually this one and then minus that with the the pay that you're getting so we'll be netting 3800 something like that 
Yeah, but I think this doesn't include yet the pilot's pay. So we'll take 30% off of that and that will be what the VA will ultimately earn. Something along those lines. But yeah, it, it's, a, it's another calculation to make things work. So that you're sure that you're going to earn something. Okay, looks good. Looks good. All right. Let's go to the on-air VA here then. One second, I heard something. Hey, Codexus. Goodness. Wow. Four months. Thank you for four months. And glad you made it here. How's it going? <clears throat> 434 hours of playtime, but 100 hours of flight time. I actually don't know my playtime because I'm not on Steam. I can only track the flight time I have. I think I have 521 at the moment, flight hours. Uh, okay, let's go and prepare that. And the thing here is we have to do this last possible moment. So we're going to destination will be the same. San Jose with Calibo as an alternate. We don't need an offset for the time. Because it's the same time zone as where I am in Singapore, so it's 8.24 in the morning right now. That would be a perfect time to fly. So we do that. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe Explain 12 will have that answer, I don't know. So here we will match the fuel, the total payload. We'll, we'll change that later, I'll show you. But first, let's load up the sim. I hope live weather is back. There, yeah, 521 hours. That's the flight time. So if you load in San Jose here, load up anywhere, maybe gate two. And we will have six passengers, no cargo. So maybe we can pick one which is a passenger variant, right? Uh, one second, where is it? Is it the Tundra interior? Yeah, I think Tundra interior is the cargo um, or the passenger variant. So we can have actual passengers visible in the plane as we load people in. Hey guys, you guys have any preference with the colors? Let's see. Red. Summit. I like that color, but it's Summit. Tundra. Just go through these quickly. A green one, wow. It's bright green. This one looks nice. Tundra interior. Blue and yellow. Quite classy. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. So in terms of weight and balance, we need six people. Um, we'll adjust that later, I think. That's okay, we'll adjust that later. Alright, and then let's load this in. With lifetime. There we go. Ooh, rough approach is there, nice. So yes. Yes, I see a rough approach. Thanks for joining. Southeast Asia. So if anyone wants to fly with us, Southeast Asia server. Spawn in at Romeo Papa Uniform Hotel. See you there. I also have a scenery. Will it crash? I also have a scenery of the... Uh, maybe it crashed? I don't know. That's new. I also have a scenery of this airport, San Jose. We'll see how it looks. <clears throat> Although I did see this a couple of times already in past jobs. We'll see if that works. But yeah, it, I think it hanged. Goodness. Yeah, it did. It did crash. Okay. So that's going to be very uh, challenging. That's my wallpaper at the moment. I wonder what, why it did that. It's not going to be good. Maybe that's due to the recent live weather problems. There's a new issue that people have been spotting, which have been acknowledged by the developers. They found that uh, every day at midnight Zulu time, so UTC, 
the live weather disappears and it comes back like an hour later and midnight zulu 1200 zulu i think is right now right it's 1228 or 028 zulu at the moment so we might be in that window maybe that's what caused the ctd so we'll see hey deso welcome back how's it been yeah texas it looks great so far looking forward to it ms bring back swiss yes msfs welcome back man yeah phantom bug not sure how they'll answer that i hope they do i hope they fix that i hope it's fixed by now yeah, live weather has been getting so many problems recently. When January 1 hit, um, when we hit the new year, live weather just said bye bye. I guess there was a bug on the. Someone was theorizing, maybe in the back end, the, the, the server was still looking at 2021, but it's now 2022. So it couldn't find any weather information, something along those lines. It's likely, it's highly likely, I wouldn't be surprised. These things do happen in production systems. But yeah, we didn't have live weather for four days or three days, I think. Uh, until the, the guys from Asobo went back to the office and fixed it. But now we still have this daily outage on the live weather. And I'm not sure if this is something they will fix. Or if this is just a limitation. <clears throat> that being said, yeah, so a while ago, I was... Uh, actually, a few days ago, I started it. Trying to set up X-Plane again. Because I really was craving for those systems. And I wanted to fly the TBM again. The TBM 900 from X-Plane. It's by Hot Start. It's one of the best planes I've flown systems are so detailed and so close to real life like how steve okinivo the youtuber tells it 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 does exactly the same thing like how the temperature spike how the the numbers look so it's really study level i would say and there's this new plane that's coming out from the same developer uh, in two days, I think, or three days, the Challenger 650, if I remember correctly, which is the predecessor of the CRJ. It has very similar avionics. But yeah, I wanted to see if I wanted to buy that, if I wanted to get back into X Plane. So I loaded X Plane, loaded as much as I could in a short time, all the, the plugins that I had access to, because I still have plenty from when I bought them years ago and I loaded them up I tried it out it was pretty underwhelming the graphics although yes the systems definitely were there and they were still as great as I imagined and the, the flight dynamics how it felt was different wouldn't say it's better or worse just different so I'm not sure which is the right one, but either way, I, I'm sure I can get used to either like MSFS flight model or x flight model. Either way is fine with me. Uh, it's just something to get used to. But yeah, the systems are definitely great, but the visuals, oh, they're very bad. Yeah, I think it needs a lot more work, a lot more plugins, a lot more customizations, a lot more tweaks to make it uh, passable with these standards these days especially with msfs now entering the, the, the sim <clears throat> winter sale oh yeah did you guys get anything from the steam winter sale all right let's try this again let's see if this will work we did get that issue when live weather was not working people were getting ctds when they trying to spawn in a runway uh, an airport that had um, well any airport some people are getting CTDs when they try to spawn in with live weather so that might be it that might be it 
Romy Papa Charlie 512 will be our tail number. Within balance, spawn it up 50. There we go. Let's start with that. Okay, that looks good. Let's see this time, guys. Second time's the charm. Rough approach is still there. At least for you, it was working. Better graphics to play a game. Super visual for things. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, the immersion, right? And sometimes when the graphics looks like 90s graphics, it's hard to get immersed in something. So as much as I wanted to try the new things coming out for X-Play and the, uh, the Level Up 737, the upcoming Challenger 650. Oh, now it works. Nice. I decided maybe I stay here in MSFS for now. Maybe when x 12 comes out, I'll give it a go, but x 11 as it is, it's a bit too old for my taste. Okay, start it up. There we go. Oh, that actually works. Is it? A while ago, I saw the propeller move. Maybe it needs to be open though. Huh? It's not like purely mechanical. That doesn't need electricity or anything. So there's the plane. Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> nice, man. This is a rough approach, I believe. On the Kodiak 100 as well. The Safari Wings livery. Fancy. And yes, this is the custom airport of uh, San Jose. Very nice, right? Nothing fancy, but definitely not standard. A lot more customized. Pretty straightforward airport in here, just like how you would expect it in these parts. <clears throat> now let's see if we can start things up, but maybe let's open the door because things might be hot right now. Let's open up everything here. There we have the seats. Nice. Let me try and load it up here. Yeah, x 12 looks pretty promising based on the previews. Maybe, and if it would have closer to graphics like this with, uh, with the systems from x -Plane, that might be a good combination. I am doubtful it would match the graphics in MSFS fully. Like the satellite images, it wouldn't have that. Like uh, just go anywhere in the world and you'll have um, proper satellite images. You'll have to download them yourself still, I think. But uh, the clouds at least will be 3D now. No longer 2D sticker looking things and whatnot. All right, let's try this again. Flight offset. So we have six people. We try to match that here. I don't see any clouds though. I'm not sure if that's live weather or really not loading anything. How does it look on your end of approach? I think this is live weather because I'm getting custom winds. So a good indication normally is if you're uh, so I have little nav map here and you can see the winds information 86 at 5 knots the default I think is like if it's coming from the west at around 2 knots 3 knots then that might be the um, that might be the, the, the fake weather Yeah. so it looks like live weather did load but then the clouds don't look proper we'll see maybe it loads later on Okay, maybe that's still loading in. Okay. Let's start loading up people. Maybe it's better if I look from here so we can load people bit by bit. We have six folks. Uh, let's put them at maybe 80 kilos. What is 90 pounds? Because 90 pounds is what... Um, 
on air is expecting we put in maybe maybe 85 there they are one two three four five and six right we're actually a bit above now you can lessen the load a bit because there is a way so in on air some people are complaining about on air like this that they're setting the weights wrong if you start this flight there's a way to auto set the flight in the the payload in the fuel i highly recommend against it because on air does not have information on the cg in the center of gravity so it will load it wrong so i suggest you load it manually and just match the numbers here look, if you look here sim has one two four three we are due 1141 so we can actually lessen the load a bit and just do that manually so you have a bit more control about the center of gravity the the weight and balance right now we have almost full aft cg here let's make some people lighter i think we're still good yeah That's close enough. Okay, let's do it that way. Good. We have actual passengers. They don't move though. But it's nice to get some variety in there, right? I wonder who they reference these guys from. They look so real. Good. Alright. So they're all loaded up. Let's close the door. Yeah, I don't like the graphics either. You can make X-Plane 11 look great, but you really have to work for it with the plugins and the tweaks and whatnot. Okay. Close the door. Open up the window. It's a bit hot here. And let's start playing. Start hearing the fans, the avionics fans. That standby indicator. I'm pulling the circuit breaker for it because it's a huge hog in FPS. I don't really need it. Fuel tanks. Push that in for the firewall. Looking great. Still aligning, keeping level. Don't think it would get close. Yeah, me, me neither, but uh, I think I will be able to play it. Because the planes in X-Plane, the third-party planes there are amazing. Let's have a look here. PFT options, uh, altimeter units, let's go back to hectopascals. And over the here in this airport, there is a 12-foot elevation, so that looks like standard to me. Maybe listen it like so, 1012, something like that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And today we'll be cruising at... You know what? I'm not really sure. Oh, I think we're going to Puerto Galera. It's a very famous spot, beaches and whatnot. Nice. Oh, I hear something. The graph approach is starting his engine. Very nice. <coughs> Let's go and start our, to do the same. Am I missing something? Well, we'll know later. Let's start, turn on my beacon. And before we start the engine, I have to start the flight in on air. So that it starts tracking what I'm doing. And that will start the counter for the rent. Good. Alright, I think that's working now. Nice. Let's turn on our ox fuel pump. Turn on the ignition. Clear prop. Turn on the starter. Monitoring NG. When it's above 14%. Switch to low idle. flight will be monitored until you land and shut down the engines. There we go. That's on air confirming that it is capturing. NG is climbing. There we go. 53%. We have a good start that 
turn on the air conditioning. What is it outside? 27 outside. Not that hot, but not that cold either. Let's get a comfortable 22 degrees in here. There you go. And get out of feather mode. Turn on the generator. Mother the amps. It's normal. Turn on the alternator. We are good to go. Hey Ahmed, good morning. Hey Bao Bao, glad you made it. How are you? Are you get busy with these days? Uh, Romeo Papa Uniform Hotel is the IK code of the airport. Romeo Papa Uniform Hotel. Let's go to Engine Inlet Bypass as we're on the ground here. Let's go to let's, let's fly VFR. So let's go. I think I'm not sure actually what is the VFR squawk in the Philippines. Just going with 7,000. Transponder to altitude reporting. Looks good. And here, maybe let's just cruise at around, I don't know, 4,500 in terms of altitude. We're just going to traverse the island <clears throat> off the coast and just go north. In terms of runway, what runway are we going with? 86. Um, winds are coming from the east, so we'll take runway 10, which is a 107. Heading of 107. So this is just that here. Looks good. Alright. Let's go in taxi. And then I'll do my checks in a bit. Let's turn on our nav lights, taxi lights. Strobes will turn that on later. Release the parking brake. Off we go. Yes, I saw him join. I welcomed him. Yes. So he's a developer for the photography simulator, is it? Nice. Oh, one thing I didn't compute yet. Let's see, our takeoff weight is... Oh crap, this is in kilos. One second guys, huh? Let me switch back to... Um, to uh, pounds here, because all of the computations are in pounds. Let me use US here. It's easier for me. Oh, nice! Who would this guy be? Yes, let's go fly together, guys. Uh, if you look at our pound, 6169 would be our takeoff weight. And if I go and get that image I got from a screen capture from one of um, Missionary Bush Pilot's uh, videos, he has the V speeds there. So we had 6169, so we're at like 6300 maybe. Takeoff would be 59, landing would be 69. So let's go and plug that in 59 and 69. So timer and reference, let's go. VR would be 59 knots and then maybe for uh, VX no for for glide hopefully we won't need that because we don't have VRF in here if we need to go back then 69 knots would be our uh, VRF speeds that's you Maxwell nice thank you all right Right, off we go. Um, actually, I had, had that released already. <clears throat> so let's do our checks here. Uh, gas. We do have gas. Yeah, so fuel selectors are on. Firewall pushed in. We have uh, fuel 50%. Just turn on the ox fuel pump. There it is. Gas is on under carriage. We need flaps 20. verify that yeah we have flaps 20 I like how the cabin actually shakes during taxi you can see it in the wing there so realistic yeah let's do a back taxi here looks clear All right so undercarriage is good mixture let's go to high idle props are full forward switches let's go and turn on our strobes landing lights Let's go to pulse 
and we should be able to turn off taxi lights. Alright, let's back taxi here to the beginning. And one thing that's important that we should never forget, especially on this plane, set up the trims. As we have a mostly full aft center of gravity, we need more forward trim like this. I would imagine something like that would be enough, or maybe even more like this. And then we need some right rudder trim as well. Let me get a bit of right rudder trim right there. You see it over there. I think that should be enough for now. Good. You see the pulsing lights working. It's nice. All right. So we don't really have a plan in mind, guys. No flight plan. But we're basically going to be traversing the coast here on the west side of the island making our way north until we get to the sightseeing spot and then I'll just circle around there have our tourists here take some photos when they're happy we go back to this airport and hopefully we get paid I'll see okay see photography fresh sim and uh, World War II rebuilder nice cool All right there's rough approach there's Maxwell I can just position myself here. Are we going to do a parallel takeoff? That would be cool. <laughs> nice. Wait for Maxwell. Over here, 107. But yeah, I do like all the sounds, the the immersion that this plane gives. There's even a cup holder, and you can even adjust the air conditioning, the vent so cool ah yes and now we have 22 degrees cool. we do have clouds now there we go nice that feels more realistic and did it change our uh QH? not really it's still there i think 1011 would be better no 1012 it's better yes good all right okay cool let's do it 59 knots would be our rotation speed. Let's see if that's really going to work. Checklists are okay. I'm feeling the switches here below. Everything is in the up position. That's for my checklist for gumps. Alright, that looks good. Okay. Stay center line. Air speed's alive. 59 knots rotation and we'll just nudge it a bit there we go 59 knots it works it works amazing okay nice that Airborne calculation seems locked. to be working perfectly All right let's keep it here there's no landing gear to 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 extend or to pull up right to tap the brakes anyway that looks good we'll keep this heading for now until we get to around 400 feet and then we'll turn to the right there we go start pulling our flaps up 90 knots flap zero we are good to go and let's go do our climb to actually maybe we don't need to be that high maybe 2000 is okay 2000 feet i think is good enough the takeoff speeds yes i i got that screen capture of the takeoff and landing speeds from missionary bush pilot i haven't really seen it in the manual from SWS from Simwork Studios nor from the official POH so I'm not sure how accurate it is but so far it seems to be working fine I've been trying it with different weights and it works I'm not stalling when I'm doing those landing speeds those EREFs and I'm properly rotating at the, the speeds that it's indicating based on the weight so pretty good actually I have a large side slip in here because I have too much right rudder now so I need to lessen that 
this in the right rudder so we fly a bit more coordinated and uh, now that we're airborne I should be able to continue my climb remove the ox fuel pump to stand by um, shall we keep our landing lights to pulse no I think they're okay turn them off for now and then what we need to do is actually pull back on the RPM can hear it winding down a bit we want that to be 2000 rpm just pulling back my propeller lever and i'm monitoring it there we go 2000 feet as well also i think we can increase the brightness of the screen here if we dial this up like so there you go it's a bit better let me trim myself here because I think it's still not properly trimmed. There we go. Let's pull back on the throttle here for around 1250 torque. That would be a comfortable cruise. Like so. And then trim it out again. Alright, here we go. I guess we can get closer to the the coast here. I do feel the winds pushing me out from the east here. Quite nice. Yeah, table. I'll show you the table. I took it as a screenshot. Literally took a screenshot as I was watching one of MVP's videos. Let me show you that one. <laughs> and it's working. <laughs> it's working. So we used the 6,300 pounds gross weight here. Take, taking off at 59 knots, landing at 69 knots later, maybe even lower. We'll see how that works. But yeah, the takeoff at 59 works perfectly. Let's have a look outside if our friends are flying with us. Yeah, there they are. Maxwell and Rook Approach. Awesome, guys. Good job. There it is. Welcome to the Philippines, everybody. How beautiful it is here. Of course, I'm biased, but it's also true. go and trim ourselves up and yes I'll be hand flying this as much as I can because that's the fun right you can see this huge mountain range in here so we're just making our way north because the tourist spot is somewhere there where my mouse is you know what let me have a look at that in more detail I still have the engine inlet bypass because I'm only 2,000 feet um, there might still be birds here, not sure. Okay, there you go. I think that's better. One second, huh? It's resetting the track IR. There we go. Let's also turn on the yaw damper, that will help a bit. Make the plane a bit more stable. It easier in the passengers, less bumpy. And yeah, the the when I flew in X-plane, it didn't feel like this. It might be that my controls were not sensitive enough. Maybe there was a setting in there by default that lessened the sensitivity. But I was flying TBM, and it felt so sluggish. So I, I'm guessing I should be tweaking that a bit more. I'll probably re revisit it later when I get the time. Let's see. Okay, looks good. No flight plan. Let me have a look at the uh, on air here on the side where it wants us to go. White Beach Lodge. Looks like it's uh, somewhere based on the estimates there where my mouse is at the moment so we can probably go north and you can see there's like a valley in here in between the mountains we can squeeze through the valley there and then just go straight in here where we will circle around that might work oh and one thing i forgot is actually 
turning on EIG traffic because I do have some traffic um, do us have some airlines in here in the Philippines I downloaded Philippine Airlines Cebu Pak Air Asia I think those three mainly so we should see some planes at least in the sim as they fly along do some plane spotting airborne I don't think I've even trimmed yet still. One second there. There we go. There we go, that's more like it. I also like that they have like this trim sound, trim button. This makes everything more immersive. It all adds to the immersion factor. Winds are pretty stable here away from the mountains. No downdrafts or whatnot. And yes, also the winds are pretty mild actually. Three knots coming from Northeast. Nice. Yeah, even on the water, it's almost like glassy, right? No waves and whatnot because the winds are so gentle. First master TCA yoke. Nice. Ah, uh, the yoke. You mean the one for the Boeing? Yes, I heard very good things about it. I'm not sure. I, well, I don't have it. But yes, Thrustmaster has been known to make great products. If you're looking for a yoke, that's one thing that you can look at. The Thrustmaster yoke that just released. Or if you have access to it, I think one of the best right now for the price is what I'm using. Honeycomb Alpha. It's almost always out of stock though, so that might be harder to get. But either one of those, I think you will not regret it. Yeah, these mountains are a bit higher than how we're flying right now, so they're probably around three, four thousand. If you look for the relative terrain, yeah, it's all red. We can simply go higher and go above them, but uh, we don't really need to at the moment. Okay, the game should stutter a bit. AIG traffic just loaded up. Okay, we do have planes. Oh, looks like we do have some planes in San Jose, is it? One second. It's going. Let me get stable in here. Go and check it out. Okay. Open that map front and center yeah those are the planes that the IG traffic spawned in it's an, it's an A320 Cebu Pacific A320 uh, yeah that one is disappearing though weird it's weird this one is Cebu Pacific as well A320 you can even see their flight plan and these are all Cebu Pacific get that back to Topo, there you go. You can find it anywhere in stock in Europe. Yeah, that's that's often the problem. It's very hard to get stopped. Mine, I actually shipped all the way from Canada. I found someone from Canada in Amazon um, selling it and I had it shipped all the way here to Singapore. So it took a few weeks, I think, but and I had to pay extra tax because of the import taxes, but it was worth it in the end. But yeah, I can imagine on your end, the shipping is always a challenge, right? So I think ultimately you get whatever is available near you. Yeah, the shipping. How about the, the, the Boeing yoke, the, honey, the Thrustmaster yoke? Do you have it available there already? Because it, it just released, right? I'm not sure if it's in the market already. You know, Fabio is flying with it. I think he likes it so far. Let's catch up. Oh, look at this beachfront right here. Although that looks like a road as well. Yeah, right by the coast. Nice. have a look behind us 
yeah, the guys are doing great. Man, that looks amazing. Yeah, even this simple thing, right? Nothing fancy, no seat, no sights or whatever, but just the trees, how that looks. That looks so real, especially coming from x a while ago. So yeah, definitely, despite Microsoft Flight Sim's flaws, they really gave us such a nice sim here. And hopefully it just keeps on getting better. You can get it from Germany. The shipping is like 15 euros, so not that much. Ah, nice. Yes, go for it, man. Go for it. You won't regret it. That should be a good product right there. 15 euros, that's actually pretty cheap. So does that one come with the, the throttles already? Is that like a package? You get the yoke and the throttles? Or is that separate? We sold. I think we have it over here as well. We have like an official Thrustmaster store here in Singapore and uh, yeah, they're selling the yoke here already along with other stuff from Thrustmaster. RPM went down to 1990. Let's bring it back up a little. 2000 RPM there. Sold together. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that would be perfect because the Honeycomb Alpha doesn't have a throttle. You would need a separate um, throttle quadrant with it. It's not very cost efficient either. So even though it's great, it's a bit more pricey. Nice Geek Squad. Where were you driving? Did you have Pro Mods enabled already? Yeah. So flying visually like this, it's going to really be hard to beat MSFS with its big maps and uh, all the different cloud technologies, right? I wonder what X Plane 12 will offer. But I'm really looking forward to it because uh, I heard many, at least some, for example, the TBM I was mentioning a while ago and the Challenger 650. So basically from Hot Start, the developer, they confirmed that their planes for X-Plane 11 um, will get a free update to X-Plane 12. So if you bought it before, you will have a free update for X-Plane 12 already. So you don't have to buy it again. That's huge because the, the their planes cost. I remember the TBM cost like 90 USD, I think. If I remember correctly, is it 90 or 60 USD? One of those. So it was pretty pricey, but you get updates for free, and yes, including when the sim itself gets updated. So we'll see. When x 12 comes out, I'll most likely give it a try. And maybe, hopefully, we can use both sims, right? Maybe depending on the plane that releases, we can switch to whichever sim we want. More choices, more competition, more fun. If only your PC could run it, yeah, that's a thing, that's a truth. Yeah, it is quite challenging that way. The specs required are getting higher and higher. And the supplies for the parts are getting lower and lower. That's the dilemma. Oi, Jack! Goodness! The grind worked. Congrats on the FL1. Such a nice tanky truck. Did you try sleeping in it yet? It's amazing. You can sleep anywhere. Even though it technically doesn't have a sleeper, right? When you look in the interior, but no complaints. You don't like it. <laughs> there they are. Let's take a photo there. I'm banking just a tad to the left here, so let me get a bit of right rudder maybe. I think normally you'd apply a bit of aileron trim, but I'm too lazy with that. I don't have that map. So I'm just sticking with the right rudder. This plane would have made me upgrade my gear. Ah, yes. Yeah, so you bought the Kodiak 100 as well? Oh, yeah. This is a great plane. 
one of the best out there at the moment. For me, my yeah, my, my top two would be the Arrow, still the Just Flight Arrow, which I just released a video yesterday in the channel. Where we are doing our No GPS World Tour series. We're currently in India and I fly the Turbo Arrow there. It's really amazing. Oh, I see someone there in that airport, I think. Is that the main tag? Hidden behind the mountains. I think so. Oh, that's awesome, Max. Yeah. It's nice that live weather got fixed already because I was craving to fly. But we had live weather issues, so I was waiting for it to get fixed, and it was just perfect timing. It got fixed when I got a chance to to uh, to fly. Let's try releasing the uh, engine inlet bypass. Let's go back to normal. We should get a few more knots, I think. The torque should increase a bit. So let's see from 1,300. Let's see what the final um, torque would be. After we give it a couple of seconds, maybe. And our airspeed should also increase as a result. Because, yeah, the, the bypass protects your engine, but it also lessens the airflow, I believe. So your, pa your engine is not uh, working as, or is not being able to put out as much power as it can. You're limiting it a bit for the sake of safety. Which is a good trade-off, but yeah, you do lose power as a result. So now you can see our speed here. I think we're getting like 5 knots, 7 knots. Indicated airspeed more. Yeah, we're at 150 knots now. Amazing. Should have released that sooner. And then our torque is now at 1450. We started 1300 or even less, right? So around 150 torque. 150 foot pounds more when we went back to normal engine inlet that landing <laughs> my goodness that instrument failure could not have come at a worse time when you're only relying on your instruments going like this view right and you're relying on your instruments to work and they suddenly freeze oh my goodness that is a recipe for disaster I'm happy we landed at all. In India, but was meant to be in India. <laughs> close enough, close enough, yes. <laughs> yeah, that part in India is really strange to me. I've been observing that area for quite a while because of the World Tour series, so I'm trying to see when the weather gets better. But I've been monitoring it since we started the World Tour series, which was, what, a few months ago? And it is always just like foggy, always IFR, always low IFR. Like, and when I asked uh, Jay, who is from India as well, he knows more about the stuff. He did say that the northeastern side of India is a bit more like that. And some of them have like rain 365 uh, days a year. So it's, it's uh, some areas are really just like that the entire year. So I'm glad we were able to land and shoot an instrument approach. World of Truck events. Ah, I see, I see. Yeah, so you were doing the Christmas event. I think that ends on Jan 16, Geeks 1. So still have time to finish it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, with the arrow, it's all steam. Gauges. Ooh, that is the C25C. That is the CJ4, right? I think so. Yeah. Papa Uzki at 12,000 feet and climbing. Nice. Yeah, these, these kinds of flights very relaxing. So going back, we can maybe go the other way, so we can kind of go around the island. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. Max is right there, we can see him now. Pretty cool. The LODs are not rendering his 
landing gear so it looks like the Kodia actually has its landing gear raised <laughs> rough approaches there too oh, looks super fancy low flight oh lagged a bit there am I climbing? yes I'm climbing my bad I was trying to see uh, they looked like they were below me now well apparently I was getting off course Right, Jack. Thanks, man. No worries. Motor down for the win. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. What is that? Looks like there's a valley up ahead there. Maybe we can check that out in the... I think I have to retrim the plane because when we released that engine inlet bypass, got more power, so it's trying to pitch up more. So I have to trim it down. Again. Makes kind of sense. In this, we're getting more torque. I think I have to adjust the rudder trim too. But that's the fun in the hand flying. Even if you're just flying in a straight line, there's always something that you need to do. Alright, so here's the valley that we see from the map, so we can follow that in. Not sure how high that is though. Let's have a look at the relative topography. Yeah, we should be safe, I think. Right? Yeah, we should be safe. Some green spots there, so... Should be 2,000 feet, if I remember correctly. Green is 2,000 feet, yeah. Okay, should be okay. The power of technology, huh? Don't have to second guess yourself anymore. Pretty cool. Alright, so we'll get in here. What is an A339? An A33900 maybe? A330 in the sim. Nice. Speaking of, I haven't flown the A320NX. The A32NX in a while. Has anyone flown the recent development version? Obviously, the FMS, the uh, flight management now, the avionics, the autopilot meaning the LNAV and the VNAV, or however you call it in Airbus terms. Start our gentle right turn here into the valley. It is starting to get higher, isn't it? But should be okay, I think. Then let me have a look at on air here. Zoom in a bit so we know exactly where we have to go. We are getting near Puerto Galera. I think this is, yeah, I think this is Puerto Galera. White Beach Lodge. Let me have a look at my other screen. Uh, look at that here. Maybe let's trim out properly first. So it's not running away from us. Right Beach Lodge. Well, there might be many White Beach Lodges. No, it is Puerto Galera. Yes, indeed. Let me show you. Let's say load it in. One second. I think I've been here before, Puerto Galera, but I can't remember to be honest. Oh, there's Max right there. With the Cody. 2,000 feet. Fancy. 2,200 more like. Yeah, so this is where we're going. Keep an eye out on... For this... Establishment. White Beach Lodge. Pretty straightforward looking establishment. But I think the highlight here... Are the beaches. Yeah, with Puerto Galera it's mainly the beaches. One second, huh? Go there. Thank you. I'm trying to remember. Ah, so that's it. Yeah, because I remember in, to get to Puerto Galera, you have to take a boat from the... from For example, if you're from Manila, the capital. So let me show you the map here. 
So Manila is right here. So this is the Philippines, right? Manila, the capital, is right here. And then Batangas is a very known, um, well-known spot for vacations, for road trips. So oftentimes people can like take their car south to Batangas. And then if you're going to Puerto Galera, if you look here, there's actually a ferry route from Batangas to Puerto Galera. So you have to take a ferry to get to that place because it's a, literally a, a different island. And that's where we're going here. Somewhere in Puerto Galera, White Beach Lodge. Oh, there it is, White Beach. Very nice. Yeah, I wonder how on air does that. Because I think Neofly has something similar. How do they programmatically find the tourist spots? I, I doubt they plug that in one by one for the entire world. Super cool. This view. You look at Maxwell there. Cruising by the mountains. Nice. <clears throat> Working title CJ4. That is amazing. Yes. That has the best avionics in the sim in my opinion. Well, now the G1000NXI is catching up. So maybe this one has the best now, but before the CJ4 really is amazing, even during the beginning. That's how Working Title got their their renown, their fame, because they released such amazing uh, mods for free, which made the sim feel more like a sim and less like a game. GTN 750, yeah, it's very good uh, sim as well. Although the GTN 750 I like because it's very user friendly, but the actual uh, programming of the legs, the approaches, it is still mostly using the the default I think, right? So it has, or at least it had the the U-turn problem before back in the day. So the the sicknesses from the default flight planning I think is there but all the fancy features like Navigraph charts VNAV calculation and whatnot descent top of descent calculation and just easy drag and drop um, interface makes it really a useful tool for navigating around oh and checklist yeah it's very comfortable yeah yes so if you're okay, if, if it's not bugging out for you the, the default autopilot or the default flight management, the legs, uh, I'm not sure how you call that, then that should be fine. Why I like the CJ4 and the G1000 NXI in particular is because they're, they have their own logic for programming those legs. And it's a lot more accurate from what I've seen, from what I've flown. All right, let's see. Now, where could this thing be? Should be one o'clock here, off the coast. That might be Batangas we're looking at already. Yeah, we're way back there still. Just the map. Uh, yes, there is a button. So if I go and check little nav map here, there is a button here supposedly, which brings it out like this. But I heard some people don't have that. I think you have to unlock it somehow. There's a setting here where you can unlock the map. Mm, allow window moving maybe? Or... Uh, yeah, w one of here. One of the options here, I believe. You can change the, the lock option. I remember some, some people asked me about that as well. And they mentioned they didn't have that, that button. Yeah, there, there we go. Yes, the flight path following thing. Oh, fuel estimation. Yeah, that's true. The G1000 NXI has that now as well. In the system or lean page rather. You have the endurance. I use this quite a bit in one of my jobs. I was literally like five minutes away from running out of fuel. <laughs> but I made it in time somehow. Sure thing, Max. Did you get the premium for the GTN 750? It is quite pricey in one payment, right? But yeah, it might be worth it. Yeah. <coughs> I 
bad. Way below 2000. Actually, we should start low, going lower and going slower as we get nearer the destination. Because we need to be below 600 feet, if you guys remember. Below 600 feet AGL. And we are getting very close, I think. If I'm just eyeballing this, let me show you what I'm looking at. This is what I'm looking at. So the, the destination is there. I think there is something you can download and activate so that the actual landmarks will be visible in the sim. Um, but I don't I don't want any overlays in the sim, so I just have my other screen showing me where I need to go. But you can do that if that's something that you like. Annual package. Oh, nice. And yeah, that makes the price a bit cheaper, right? A bit more affordable. Not uh, such a lump sum. Yes, on air side seeing mission. So let's start going down. Maybe to 1,000 feet for now. Start descending here a bit. So weather like here 22 degrees for real wow it's really cold right now winter in the philippines as well <laughs> as wintry as it gets yeah i was i was mentioning that a while ago if this was a helicopter it would have been so much easier staying in place for 20 seconds few minutes and with a kodiak it shouldn't be that hard either you can go slow and you can just go around in circles but we'll try to spot where it is if we'll find a house at least i don't think it's actually in the sim let's go to maybe 500 feet msl actually maybe not uh, maybe 1000 is where we're staying because uh, these mountains here Look, they're, look like they're eager to meet us. <laughs> and I can't say the same. Okay, so should be close. Should be one of these, I think. We find the house. Maybe it's here. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's that. I think it's that one. That might be the White Lodge somewhere here. Yeah? White Beach Lodge. Could be, possibly. But it's this beach that's the highlight, I would imagine. So let's go 1,000 feet. Let's start slowing down. we'll do circles here but we should get an, a tone when it's time oh there's rough way braver than I am man the seaplane variant for the Kodiak would be amazing here huh with the floats yeah there it is Puerto Galera guys okay let's start going lower maybe 700 feet or let's go 500 feet why not yeah, we're passing it. It's, it's this one for sure. Let's go around. Well, don't beat off the speed so much. There we go. Yeah, I see it in the on-air map. Do you have the plugin installed where you actually see it inside the sim? I don't have it. Let's go lower in here. Come on, 500 feet should be okay. My goodness, this is scary. There it is. We are now in the White Beach Lodge zone. You can hear the, the tourists taking photos. Oh crap, what? Oh. Oh, there you go. Which actually gives you a sound when you get out of the zone. There you go, that's done. 500. 
That's quick. Alright, let's start climbing again. Just a bit of right rudder as we climb. Awesome. Yeah, but those those audio cues are nice. Give you a nice indication of if you're doing the right thing or not. Only an arrow object pointing down. Ah, I see. Maybe you should install it, huh? Quite nice. If you look at our flight, our, our, our breadcrumbs in here. That's what we did. We basically looked around, gave them a nice preview of the place. Back here. Let's get back to 2,000 feet and continue on this other side of the island. Very nice. Yeah, with, with chill flights like this, this is the perfect time for relaxing. Not much in terms of workload. Basically, when you just arrive. Yeah. But as you're cruising like this, it's mostly keeping a straight line. Which you can actually do in autopilot. But it's also quite fun. And flying it. Right, let's go back. It's only visible in the near vicinity, about 3 to 4 nautical mass. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I like that. So it doesn't, like, how do you say, break immersion because there's an arrow floating above or whatnot. That was my main concern, that's why I didn't um, install it. Right, let's level up here, 2,000 feet. Let's have a look at our friends. Where have they gone? There's Ruff. Oh, I see Max as well. Awesome, guys. Hope you're enjoying the tour. <laughs> Goodness. And yeah, this is the cool thing about this plane because you can be as involved as you want. Right? You can hand fly it the entire way and get all the nice flight dynamics in the process. Or you can actually also go and do it the easy way. Press the easy button, literally. Turn on the autopilot and go there and just get back on your seat when it's almost time so quite a lot of options for every playstyle depending on your mood there we go 2000 feet I am getting a bit of wind here I'm not sure if these are only winds coming from our, around 10 o'clock but the, these might be the, some updrafts, maybe? I'm not sure. <clears throat> but if the winds are coming from here, then there should be no winds coming from the hills, right? Maybe. Oh, I, I would love to learn more of those things. I think that would be great to learn about how the wind flows and uh, what to expect depending on where the wind's coming from, depending on the terrain, those kind of things would be great to learn. Pretty neat tour. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Cool. I have to remember to remove the yaw damper as we land. I have to disable yaw damper before landing so you have full control of your rudder. Otherwise, it would kind of be fighting with it. There is supposedly an airport to our left. I'm trying to spot it. Don't quite see it, but there is a city there. What city is that? 
RP UK. We have a look at the nav map. This one. Kalapan. That might be it, yeah. So the airport is beyond the town. I hear someone, I think. One of the guys is near me. I can actually hear them. Oh yeah, there it is. There's rock. Nice. And yeah, this is something that's understated, I guess, oftentimes. One of the main perks of this sim is actually the multiplayer, right? It's how easy it is to fly together. Just load up in the same place, make sure you're in the same server, and that's good. No more like joining game, creating a game, you know, uh, typing in passwords and whatnot. Just load in like you normally do, and you, you'll meet each other. It's amazing. That's something you don't get in other sims. And it just makes it such much more a, a joy to fly. Very interesting here, the weather. Are those clouds at the bottom? That might be one of the things that they are complaining about, like the clouds at the bottom like this. At which point should have turned into fog or something. I don't know the details on it, but it just looks a bit off, doesn't it? That being said, still looks great. No complaints. So how close are we? Let's have a look. If we go for nearest. Uh, not really in there. RPUH, that's the one. BFR, okay. Uh, 57 miles, really? Oh wow. Thought we were closer. Okay. But we can actually go direct there, right? So if we go nearest and then go there just so we have some guidance we can go direct san jose yeah that's the one direct enter enter there we go and now we have a straight line going to the airport which we can go to if we go beyond the mountain actually you know what let's do that let's do that for the sake of price because we might not earn much here for the sake of time let's uh let's climb here guys so I'm pushing forward with my throttle here. Let's do that climb. As we get this higher angle of attack, as our pitch goes up, the plane is pitching up, right? The angle of attack increases. Later on, I would need to apply right rudder again. Yeah, you can see, starting to slip there. Right? So I need to start applying right rudder. for the climb you'll probably need around I don't know 6,000 feet more or less yes let's see how that works in the climbing at around 110 knots should be a comfortable nice fast paced climb for us good all right larger have a good one thanks for joining us Good luck with work. Hang in there. <laughs> there we go. There's the a slip. Get a bit of right rudder trim. Get that back coordinated. There we go. Perfect. Just a little bit of right rudder trim. Have a good one. All right. I think we can go through here. Maybe not go beyond the peak there, but instead. Try to squeeze in here. Squeeze in this gap of clouds in that lower side of the mountain right there on the left. Might be cool. Man, this sim. I've been flying with this sim for over a year, right? Since its release. And yeah, despite its flaws, despite the complaints that we have, at the end of the day, still an amazing sim it gives you all this immersive vibes goodness that looks good and yeah there are many ways to fly 
many types of planes to fly as well if you're into fighter jets if you're into big airliners we're starting to get more and more of those kinds of planes in more of those high quality fighter jets as well right starting to get that here unfortunately i'm not really um, part of that club i tried it with the hawk um, what's the call t1a from just flight it's a great plane but i just cannot maximize it i don't know how to maximize flying with one of those fighter jets my reflexes are too slow i think so it doesn't really fit me that well okay seven thousand is that enough let's have a look here mm, close i think let's go for eight thousand you know what no seven thousand is good let's go for seven thousand keep it that way so I have right visual where I should be going there we go nice let's release that right rudder trim get back to center that's why mapping your rudder trim key is so important here in the Kodiak it's such a nice implementation really gives you that feeling of a powerful turboprop engine you have to control very nice it's a very different view now okay let's get level here so i can go outside and take a photo let's try to do this hands free let's see is that okay enough oh i'm getting some down drafts here that's okay i think good all right let's try it Let's go outside. Ooh, look at that. Fancy. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. <laughs> Formation flying. So cool. stuff there's three of us right there hey cap we're at 7k lots of turbulence <laughs> let's go up to 7.5 maybe maybe that's better how are we doing cap thanks for joining a bit more of that right rudder trim and here we are at 7500 but they, even the mountains don't look bad right normally we look for those like higher dem data and stuff so that we get sharper mountains but these ones don't look that bad they look pretty sharp already It's also nice because you get the 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 trees drawn over drawn over the satellite images because the satellite images here in the Philippines are not really the best. I remember downloading Ortho Photos once for X Plane. Uh, regardless which um, supplier you get from, like Google Maps or Bing Maps, they all have mostly clouds, especially near the mountains. So when you load them in the sim, you'd get those clouds pasted. As part of the mountain textures which kind of breaks immersion it feels like there's snow doesn't really match here but yeah it's uh, it's great because when you have these trees it, those those kinds of imperfections get covered so you hardly see any of those um, clouds that might be one yeah like that right so imagine if there are no trees there you just see that white all over it feels like it's snow it's actually like one of those fake clouds. 
Let's get back to 7,500, please. Thank you. <laughs> Delayed response, Scotsman. Better late than never, right? Yeah. Oh, by the way, guys. Yeah, I forgot to announce it, but I announced it in Discord. Unfortunately, there might not be a stream on Friday, depending on how I'm feeling. Because we'll be getting our booster shot tomorrow. It's going to be Moderna. And Moderna has been known to give some nasty side effects. So I might not be in shape to actually stream on Friday. But we'll see. I'll let you guys know. I'll keep you guys posted. But yeah, we, we got a chance to get a booster and we took it immediately because things are... Uh, yeah, going up. Slowly but surely. And recently not so slowly anymore. Are things looking the same on your end, guys? Numbers going up again. And look at that. So cool. So cool. Yeah, these mountains look great, don't they? And it's nice to see lots of flyers here in the Philippines. Aside from us three, it's actually some people in there. Yeah, one in CJ4, one in the A320. Pretty cool. Yeah, this one is nice. Okay. So now, how's the weather looking like? If the weather is looking the same, and I think it is, we should be able to land using runway 10 again. The same runway we use for takeoff. Hey, fly money. Sure thing, man. Happy New Year. Enjoy the lurk. Good. It's getting the heading bug aligned. How far are we from the airport? 31 miles. That should be 10 minutes. Okay. Should be there in 10 minutes. What mountains are these? What do you call them? So this is Mindoro. Mount Baco? Or is that Baco? Yeah, I don't know any of these names. Pretty cool though. We have so many of these natural treasures here in the Philippines. Ooh. Yeah, looks great. How are the winds there, rough? Less turbulence. Yeah, look at that. Yes, live weather is working now. A while ago, I got a CTD when I tried to load in. I think I entered the live weather gap. Because there's been this known issue now, right? This, this issue has been confirmed. That live weather kind of disappears every midnight Zulu time. And uh, maybe for an hour, hour and a half, it's not there. And then it gets back. And I, try, I think I tried to load in within that window. I got a CTD because I, I was trying to load in live weather. So we had to reload the sim, but now it looks better. Now we're getting real live weather. So that window might be, that gap, I think we've crossed over it. Yeah, live weather adds so much to the sim, doesn't it? It just feels so... Like, it kind of feels like cheating even, if you're using one of the presets. Because the, one of the most fun things here in the sim is that having that dynamic weather. You never know what kind of winds you'll be getting, what kind of clouds, and what kind of other variables are involved. And it just makes the flight so much more engaging. But when you have the preset, you know exactly what kind of winds you have. You know exactly what kind of clouds you have in the visibility, temperatures, and whatnot. So it kind of like removes maybe like... I don't know, half the fun even when you simply don't have simply don't have live weather. Yeah, it's such a big deal having a live weather. 
So the, the outage the past few days really got a lot of people angry. This place is just so Ikenish. Oh. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Nightbot is a bit uh, uh can I cancel that? Sorry, I think you got yeah, nightbot is a bit <laughs> harsh when it comes to links. You have the same weather and it matches windy. Nice. Yeah he so Max just typed windy.com and unfortunately nightbot is a bit fierce. <laughs> So he captured that as a link and he punished Max for it. Apologies for that. And look at those mountains right there. OMG. And no morphing, huh? Interesting. So good. amazing indeed a while ago when we were a bit farther we I wasn't able to appreciate it but now my goodness even we have the same clouds oh really goodness really like that's that that small cloud there you see that too I didn't expect that level of um, synchronization With live weather, you can simulate having to divert or alternate. Oh yeah, exactly. Like what we did last time, right? Last week, we uh, we diverted to a nearby airport because the visibility was so bad in the airport we were trying to go to. Okay, let's start descending here. Should be okay. We pass the mountains. Uh, why are we not descending? One second. Have to pull the power a bit more, I think. There we go. And then I should be able to know when I would reach that if I adjust my altitude selector. Then the range, the bow, the, the range to alt cyan arc should update when it's expecting me to reach that selected altitude. So let's say. 1,000 feet pattern altitude for this airport. So I should be reaching 1,000 at that point. Yeah. And let's try to slow it down. There you go. And let's try to descend a bit more gently. Less than 1,000 feet per minute would be ideal for the passengers. Because they say when you have a plane that's not pressurized, you want to descend um, shallower. Because if it's not pressurized, it will be a bit more... I'm actually not sure how you would describe it. Does anyone know? But yeah, it's a, it's a common thing they say when you're flying a non-pressurized plane. Don't descend too suddenly because it will not be comfortable for the passengers. In what way? I'm not really sure. Maybe it will make your ears pop because of the sudden pressure change. And maybe, hey Breezewind, how are things? Are you still flying the Kodiak 100? I haven't been uh, able to keep up with the posts in in the SWS Discord recently. Visual 10, yeah, let's do that. It was straight in landing, extended runway center line. No need for minimums, it's great weather outside. There we go. Okay, we even have a vertical path planned for us, so we can easily follow that. Let's zoom in here a bit. But yes, I was trying to actually, so when I was recording the No GPS World Tour series yesterday, I was debating whether I would continue with the Arrow or I would switch to the Kodiak. And at the end of the day, I decided to stay with the arrow because there is a different kind of enjoyment that you get when you don't have GPS. 
and you're really relying on the visual on the nav on the on the old school nav aids right vors and dbs you don't have gps to save you it's you have to think a bit more you have to plot things a bit more more work to be done but definitely a lot more fulfilling when you finish it when you finish a flight so i decided to stick with the uh the arrow just such a, a great experience with that so i can keep on flying this kodiak 100 on on streams like this on sky park series maybe make an on-air series again but yeah for the no gps world tour having the arrow there and keeping it no gps i think is for the best second let me put that in underwater diving when you send too fast ah yeah might be might be the pressure change huh yeah might not be safe descending a bit too steep here slow it down pull back on the throttle so you can read off the speed little break from the kodiak when flying the freedom fox oh yeah i have that as well yes i tested it out it feels great but i don't know much about bush planes so I, I i wanted to make a video but um, i don't think i'm qualified enough to to uh to give a an accurate impression on it but what's yours how do you feel about it it's an amazing thing because you can literally go anywhere land anywhere such a short takeoff roll a big beefcake thanks for following welcome to the stream hey game theorist <laughs> that's true can't do no gps with a gps i agree thanks god you feel the same being in the arrow feels right to me i agree yeah let's stick with the arrow i think it's a good decision all right let's do our gumps check using my checklist checklist box here care of the honeycomb alpha these switches i don't really use so i'm using them as a checklist instead so our gumps check gas we have our fuel selectors on that's pushed in for the firewall um, we have fuel level okay we just need the ox fuel pump on that's checked for the gas under carriage um, we don't have flaps yet but we might start with that now maybe one notch mixture yes that is in high idle propeller let's go full rpm okay and switches let's go and go with the pulse lights turn on the taxi lights go to engine inlet bypass as well and then let's lock the harness here okay, good turning final okay, good all right so the only thing that's left is to actually flaps go for flaps all right second notch of flaps flaps 20. the sounds are what really do it for you ah find it a lot of fun well modeled and sounds great nice hey beefcake love on air in the kodiak oh nice man great to hear that thank you thanks for being in the stream and thanks for saying that it's great to hear all right stay at 1000 feet until that uh, pseudo glide path intercepts us and then we'll follow it down and maybe i kind of overshot it a bit one second oh one second what are you oh yeah i forgot about that 5800 landing weight 5800 so 65 knots would be our uh ref b ref i told i mentioned that oh yeah there is this kind of bug i think one second let me see if it's a bug or pilot error let's try and follow the glide path here let me get a bit more power in so we can level off a bit oh there's the glide path yeah ignore what i said it's not a bug it's just me not following the descent path properly yeah same here geek squad i've been flying it for over a year and i'm still amazed every time i fly
There we go. Let's get back on the glide path. We have puppy lights there. One white, three red. So we're too low. There we go. Now we're on the profile and now the glide path agrees. Perfect. Alright, so we'll start descending. Start going full flaps. And now we have everything checked. Checklist is good. Right. And now let's bleed off the speed. Because we want 65 knots for approach. So let me go down lower and lower. Them up. 65 knots. Pull back on the power a bit more. And then trim up, trim up. Lose that airspeed. Yeah, we're bleeding it off. That looks nice. 69 knots. Keeping it center. Wind's coming from the left a bit. 67. That looks looking good. Okay, nice. Okay, good. Let's just let it settle down. There we go. Landing time log. Gentle landing. Nice. Yeah, so yeah, it works. The, the VREF speeds from Missionary Bush Pilot, they seem to be pretty accurate with the uh, with the plane here in the sim. It's amazing. Yeah. Let's uh, go and turn off here. Oh, don't go past it. Thank you. Hey, Gamaste, how are things? Some of the lights here. Go to low idle. Turn off the landing lights, turn off the strobes. Oops. Fuel pump, go back there to stand by. We can retract our flaps. Stop here. They'll never stop. Yeah. Check out the Embraer 110. I, I saw that, yeah. I was getting tempted to buy it. But there are so many coming upcoming twin turbo prop uh, planes coming out it's it's confusing me yeah let's let's talk about that how are you guys feeling about the upcoming twin otter release date january 19th confirmed let's rock the air conditioning here nice all right let's go and shut it down lights are off not yet really Lights are off now. And let's release the harness. Okay, looking good. Go ahead and... Engine off time log. Flight is finished. It has been monitored by on air. Thank you. Less than 38% NG. Go to feather the propeller. See it changing the pitch there. Very nice. Turn off the alternator generator, aux fuel pump. And now we can turn off the plane. And now we can unload the people. Good. Let's get them out of here and then let's have a look how things are looking in on air side of things. I'll get back to chat in a bit, guys. Bear with me. There we go. Oh, I love that sound. You can actually hear it from other aircrafts as well in the area. Very nice. Ah, that water seems a bit underwhelming. I actually have not been keeping track of it. What what makes you say so? Thanks my money. I don't often get those landings so I'm, I'm, I'll definitely be, I'm definitely thankful for them. Alright, so here we are. XP received for this flight. Why is that zero? I don't get it. Uh, okay, maybe because it's ah, I think it's because um, it's probably based on your um, departure and arrival airports, and because for this job it's the same, so there is zero XP. But then that is kind of counteracted by the job itself, which gives some bonus XP. So overall, we gain thirty nine XP in there. And I hope that also levels up the VA because the, the VA apparently has levels now too. So we need to also level it up. So sightseeing, reputation increase. Oh, look at that. Soft landing. It actually gets considered. I don't know what that is. How do you convert that? 
0.51 meters per second. How do you convert that to feet per minute? Let's see. Uh, 0.51 per second to FPM. Oh, that's I think 100 feet per minute. Not bad. Not too shabby. I'm uh, just using Mr. Google here to convert. <laughs> Quite nice. If that's accurate, I guess. Multiply this by the speed value by 197. Well, that's a bit hard number to multiply. Maybe 200, huh? Would be easier. Multiply by 200. Yeah, that might be easier to compute. Just for estimation. Estimating. Oh, that was great, Ruff. That was great. You were in VR. Oh, cool. That is amazing. Well, thank you for joining. Yeah, appreciate that. Don't know how you feel, but seems like you'll have to learn Steam Gauges because everything is being released with Steam Gauges. Yes. I'm happy about that, actually. I, I would love more Steam Gauges. This is why I really enjoy the Arrow. But yeah, with the Kodiak, it fits the, the glass panel fits it very well. And initially, I was also trying to see if the Kodiak will have a, a Steam Gauge, but there is no Kodiak, which has Steam Gauges in real life. So it's pretty spot on. And flying these bush flights, with sometimes less than ideal weather, I think it's it's great to have as much um, guidance as possible. Sounds are not as nice as you expected. Ah, interior modeling reminds me of the. Oh, I see, I see. Mm. Yeah, that, that's my comment about the Embraer 110 as well. The, the 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 model itself doesn't look so high quality. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't have the plane, but just based on the images. It feels more like an older, um, like the, the model was built for an older simulator, like, I don't know, FSX maybe. doesn't have the fancy feel of an MSFS plane. Like one thing to say about Carinado, right? Carinado, they don't create the most uh, detailed planes in terms of systems, but in terms of visuals, I think they're one of the top... Um, uh, plane developers out there they have amazing models on the plane just looks shiny and just feels really like what they're trying to aim for all right so let's have a quick look here um let's see this is us i think so we loaded some jet fuel yeah that's us so we started off at um one seven four four zero two six seven seven. that's the starting balance and then we incurred fuel we have a parking fee. We have, um, actually, no, that's different. This one, yeah, landing fee. Yeah, so we earn a little, you can see. We have a parking fee, landing fee, a renting fee, which actually goes to me because I own the plane. My, So the VA is renting the plane. It's renting the plane from my personal account. So the rent actually goes to me. <laughs> And then we have the payment for the sightseeing and then the pay for the pilot, which goes to me as well. So all in all, the VA still earned something like a thousand. So at least it's not uh, negative, right? I think we have to be thankful enough for that. It's not negative. Okay. It sounds good to me. Love the Carnado Mooney, yeah. Ah, actually, I would not have any idea about the VR. Yeah, I didn't know it needed a separate um, implementation for VR. Uh, how does that work? What additional things do they have to consider? Like, do, does it have to be a different texture or maybe just the, the how do you say, the interaction areas? Maybe that's the problem. You wanted to do it in VR, but you have problems with some flickering in this plane. With the Kodiak? Oh, I see. I think Ruff was using the same. Did you have flickers as well? Maybe there's a tweak you can share. With the steam gauges, you find you get fixated in one gauge, usually. Altitude or speed? Ah, yeah, it does take some getting used to. That's true. You have to get used to observing the six-pack. There's a certain flow there, depending on who is instructing you. Yeah, I will most likely get the water. Um, but I think you, you, what your comments have merit. It might have some improvement areas. But I'll uh, take one for the team and I'll, I'll try it. 
Does any one of you have the Islander? The Britain Norman Islander? That's one that I have been hearing great things about as well. The main thing that I has had reservations before was again the visuals. It felt like the textures were not the best. Um, but the sounds were a totally different level. And those had steam gauges too. The expected CRJ level of quality and price tag. How is the price for that water? Have they released a price already? Islander flies really nice, yeah. Those things, are they all in the same category? The uh, Totter, the Ember 110, the Islander, the... Uh, what was that other one? The ATR-72? I guess those are all twin turbo props, but maybe different profiles? I'm not sure. Not really familiar with them yet. So I'm very new to aviation, to flight simming. So oftentimes, the only time I get exposed to a plane is when I fly it. I haven't flown any of them yet though. 28 euros. Oh, it's not bad. It's nice to see those prices here in the sim, huh? Normally, you would get uh, a lot more expensive. Um, I think what I saw from the water, the avionics would be a GNS 530. Is it? That means we'll need to get the, the, the mod, the GNS 530 mod, so it's decent. Alright, let's have a look. Do I have time for one more job? I'm not so sure. We can have a look though. I don't rough, I don't. I wish I did though. Maybe eventually. <laughs> Let's have a look here. Um, Guinness 530. Do they, did they say if they will have... Oh look at this. Gunny is flying and he's flying the Embraer 110. He had good reviews about that. Have you guys seen the Challenger 650 that's coming for X-Plane? This is what I say about the systems. Maybe we would spend some time chatting instead, I don't know. Because it feels like we have plenty to talk about. <laughs> let's, let me see, let me see if there's a job we can take. Maybe we can talk while we're flying, do autopilot and stuff like that. Because I want to share that part too. Yeah. Do you think it will have support for GTN 750? Because most of the planes which has GNS 530 support also have support for GTN 750, right? Let's see. All these are not allowed for us. Um, these are all sightseeing. I actually want to get to a different airport now if possible. Like this one maybe. And the cool thing about this is you can actually get multiple loads. So if I click on that airport here in the map, I actually see all the jobs going there. So I can load some people in, I can load some cargo in. Hey, this might be viable. 96 miles, that might work. We can take, I think we can take most of these. 1,800 plus 500 is 23. Maximum we can take is around 2,900. Yeah, I think we can take these and maybe this one too. Oh, tempting. Oh, but this one has two jobs in there. Crap, I hate that. This, this job with two legs, I don't like that at all. Mm, yeah, that's not going to work. What can work is these two. Right, we take some some um, business people with us, some executives, three of them in first class. And then at the same time, we can carry some cargo with us on the way. That can work. They might consider the GTN 750 after launch, I see. Yeah, that would make sense. There are lots of fans of GTN 750. Let's see what else is here. There is this one. Um, six people to uh, Mamburao. Oh, that's in the same island actually. We passed that apparently. Didn't see it. Why not? Let's have a look what other jobs are going there. 
We do have plenty, that's tempting. Hmm? We have all of these, we can take all of these. And that's fairly short, 50 miles away. Let's have a quick look at Little Nav map, how it does. Uh, that's Mamburao. It does have an asphalt, actually bituminous um, runway. 4,200, that's not bad at all. And we have great weather here. Hey, let's do it. Yeah, why not? Why not? So that we can earn a bit more for the VA. So let's take these six passengers. And then I think we'll have some room on the cargo pod for these guys. Might be. So we'll take all these three. I hope I did my math right. Let's try it. <clears throat> who was it? The other one who was developing a twin turbo prop. Uh, I think it was Milvis, right? With the ATR. That one I think could be promising. Milvis does great stuff. I was pretty impressed with their um, turbo porter. Just enough simulation in there to keep you hooked. So you see here we have almost 1,000 pounds of cargo. And if we add the passengers, we still have enough. That's cool. Okay, perfect. Just cutting it close. 32% fuel. Do we need to refill? Now one thing we have to take note of is actually if we have enough if there is jet fuel where we're going. Because it's a small airport in Mamburao, I'm not sure if they actually have something. Let me check that on my other screen. Um, airport. Airport. What was it? Yeah, yeah there we go. Size 1. ATR-72. What's the difference between the 42 and 72? I'm familiar with the ATR-72, but it's just the name. Not really familiar with the difference. We do have jet fuel there, nice. Okay. And I think it's a lot cheaper, yeah. And it's not refuel anymore. It's not refuel anymore. This is good. Good. Let's validate that. Let them do their magic, load people up. 72 is longer and more packs. Ah, I see. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, here we go. So level 1, 368 out of 1,000. This is the VA. So as we do jobs, it levels up. And when we level up, we get more skill points with the skills tree. And uh, we should be unlocked, for example, medical jobs in here. That should work. So more options for, um, for the kinds of jobs that we can take. Nice. All right. Let's get back here. Alright, let's load up the people. We have six people, right? So let's plug that in. We have around 33% fuel. Why doesn't that adjust? Huh? 51 yeah that does adjust oh it's just the slider that doesn't adjust oh how buggy let's get 32% and adjust this as well just so everything is synchronized okay Right, so let's add six passengers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Okay, you have six passengers in there. We have one more seat left. But and then cargo bay. Let me see. Let's fly now here. What is the C three ten? 
They have lots of planes in development, huh? Nice. Wasn't someone developing a Dash 8? Oh no, that was for X-Plane. Yeah, that's for X-Plane. Okay, so I'm looking at the payload. We need um, around 800 pounds more. Can we do that here? If I put 290, 280, 180. So this is the cargo pod I'm filling. Okay, it's good enough. Yeah, it's good enough. One area is happy enough with that. So we have six passengers and some cargo on the pod. Nice. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's close this up. Right, let's get back in. Second flight of the day. Awesome. Let's open the window. Oh, it's hot. Good. Right before we start the engine, we will start the tracking for on air. I still have my beacons on, my bad. And the fuel selector on everything. Ah, that's okay. Okay, let's see. Maybe let's just plug that in here. Uniform mic. That's the one. Let's go direct. Should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's that one. Good, keep wings level, okay. Uh, engine inlet bypass. I'm actually not sure if we can turn on, start the engine with a bypass on. I think in a TBM you shouldn't, but here I don't see any indication that you shouldn't. Let's maybe climb to around 3,000 feet. QNH seems still correct based on the field elevation. Almost sea level. Good. And since it's the second flight of the day, start tracking here. Since it's the second flight of the day, you should not need the ignition anymore. Look at that reflection right there from the sun. Beautiful. So we don't need the ignition. Instead, we just do the high starter in here. Love that sound. 14% NG. Your flight will be monitored lighter. until you land and shut down the engines. Monitor NG, monitor temperatures. Yeah, have a good start. Turn off the starter. That one. Propeller full. Monitor the RPM. Generator on. Alternator on. Looking good. Let's turn our nav lights. Ooh, that sound. Goodness, the C310 is similar to the Seneca. Ah, I see, I see. Is that a what? What brand is that? Is that the Cessna? Nice. I I was pretty tempted to get the Seneca by Carinado. I decided against it last minute, but yeah, pretty inspiring when Fabio flies it. All right, let's go and turn on our taxi lights. Release the parking brake. Let's go and taxi here. Oh, I didn't look at the center of gravity. CG is good. 32 degrees. Okay, so it's a bit of forward pressure like so. And then let's get our flaps. Get some rudder trim as well. Yeah, that looks good. Alright. It's a Cessna. Ah, I see, I see. Cool. So many great planes coming out. I'll share it with you the the plane that makes me go makes me really tempted to get back into X plane. And when X plane twelve hits, that's probably the first plane I'll buy. <clears throat> okay, let's enter the runway here. Strobes, landing lights, taxi lights off. Everything looks good there. Ox bus, we need that. Yeah, it's getting hot in here. All right, looks good. Store gumps check, gas, fuel selectors on, that's pushed in, ox fuel pump on, check. Under carriage, we have flaps 20, verify, yeah, that's flaps 20, that is flaps 20. We have also the parking brake release, that's why I'm moving, right? Mixture, 
let's go high idle propeller full forward switches switches are all good except the harness good all right feeling it out here checklist is complete all right ready for takeoff and one thing the v speeds 6700 takeoff weight let's have a look 6700 is here so let's go for like 62 and 73 62 and 73 all right let's go for timer reference this one is 73 oh thank goodness we have synthetic vision here i can look here while taxiing 62 and 73 there you go rotating at 62 knots nice good right off we go should be a pretty quick hop hey rough is back in the game back in vr nice right all right looking good checklist is complete let's go and power up normally they also look at the max torque for takeoff but i just look at the green line that might not be the best but it works looking good release the brakes ng is too high let's pull it back there you go airspeed's alive keep center line what's our rotation speed 62 right 62 62 knots there we go rotate very gently very nice i love it very nice yeah with this hot fix that they implemented airborne time so long. nice our takeoff was so gentle on air didn't actually detect that we were airborne until we were like 100 feet above ground nice here let's turn left instead so we can see a bit more of the the houses pitch up a bit more yeah, so it's pretty good. for flaps up our turning let's keep our pulse lights on on at the moment bypass let's keep that there but what we can do is ITT is high let's lessen that to 720 there you go and uh, pull back on the propeller lower the rpm to 2000 better for climb better for the ears as well that good 2020 okay 2000 there we go very nice All right let's continue climbing here please thank you i've been watching missionary bush pilot <laughs> yes <laughs> definitely that's a uh, required reference material in flying the kodiak 100 <laughs> learned so much from him right An amazing teacher only thing i haven't said yet is the uh abort takeoff and abort procedure right uh what, what was it cut off shut off well cut off pull off shut off <laughs> crack the door brace things like that i haven't quite memorized that yet looking good but yes let's go and uh, take it a bit easier this time so what we can do is actually turn turn on our flight director turn on our Oh, yo, damper. I actually didn't turn it off. Oh, I was going to forget that, and I did. Okay, let's go to flight level change so that it would try and keep our airspeed, adjusting the pitch as necessary. And then let's go to nav. Actually, let's go to heading mode first, and then nav. So heading is active, GPS is uh, armed. Once we get closer to the magenta line, the GPS will become active. And right now, what all we need to do is follow. 
the flight director. Altitude capture, 3,000 feet, looking good. Let's pull back on the throttle a bit for cruise. GPS is active as well. I love the annunciations. G1000 NXI is amazing. And now we can turn on autopilot as well as we stabilize here and let it do the hard work for us of maintaining the flight. Releasing the right rudder pressure as well. Looking good. Follow the flight director. Oop. Let's turn on autopilot now. There we go. Nice. Alright, so that should be taken care of. Everything should be good. Let's turn off our pulse lights in here, bypass. Uh, yeah, they can, we can let that go. Go to normals for better power. Release a little bit more of the right rudder trim. Nice. Okay, looking good. So we'll be there in 20 minutes. So we have some time. Let me show you what is really tempting me to go into what is really tempting me to get into X-Plane I have never seen such level of detail one second, where is it? looking for the article there it is Okay, I'll show you. Are you guys familiar with this plane? I wasn't. I only learned of it because of this. So this is Hot Start. This is a very famous developer in X-Plane, if you guys haven't heard of them. Um, and uh, it's the Challenger 650. This is the predecessor to the CRJ. <laughs> to the CRJ series. But it's by Bombardier as well, I think. Or at least they bought it. There's a history about that. So the, the inside, the avionics, the buttons, they are very similar to the CRJ. It has a Collins uh, FMS. Collins, what is that? Something 21. Right? So it, it looks good, right? It looks like a very small CRJ. Because the CRJ, like, right, the, the, the pencil gets longer and longer. This one is at its shortest. It is the, the Ancestor. Yeah, so it's looking pretty good. Nice models. You can see all the wires, all the connections. Very good. Look at that one. Details. But where it really impressed me, and this is impressive on its own, especially because it's X-Plane. And you can have this level of detail in X-Plane. That's impressive on its own right. But what's even more impressive are the actual systems inside. Look at this one. This is where it gets fun. Let's zoom in a bit more. Yeah, that one. So you have like. So there is no shortcut in this plane. This plane has been in development for three years, if I understand correctly. There has there is no shortcut. When you have an FMC, you actually have three independent FMC. So if one of them fails, the other two are independent of each other, or well, all of them. Okay? There are probably well over fifty independent computers running. Right. And they program this to make it as close as possible to the real plane. Each wire, each circuit is modeled in. So you can see the connections in here, which is beyond me. Right? Look at this one. There are over 1,400 individually programmable failures. Collins Pro Line 21, there you go. That's the one. Same as the CJ4. Yes, exactly. Right. So it's very similar in that sense to the, the FMS side and then at the same time it's very close to CRJ so it's like a CJ4 CRJ combination. Yeah, so over 400 and um, the, the developer Totorico, uh, he has been streaming this on Twitch. I have been watching some of the footage. My goodness, look at this guys, the, the level of the system in here. And this updates in real time. If I, if I understand correctly this is also the way it is in X-Plane in, in, the, in the TBM in a second if I can open this as a new image right so each part of the turbine engine 
is modeled in it shows the exact um, metrics in there the temperatures the pressure and as you start the engine i believe this spins and updates all the values and so if you talk, talk about study level i think nothing else comes close each of the systems is shown and in the stream it actually showed when you pull a circuit breaker i'm not sure how to read this but the circuit breaker part here it actually shows you the connection gets removed so it gets disconnected and it shows that the failures happen because of the uh, like for example i think what he did on the stream was the apu battery charger is this the circuit breaker here maybe one of these so when that gets removed then the the flow is cut off and it's shown in the systems you see the the error messages the warning messages in the fms like everything is is modeled in all the circuit breakers all the wires and all the the underneath things <laughs> technical term yeah it's amazing right hey max tang thanks for joining yeah so this is and this is not the first time he's done this for the tbm in in explain it has a similar thing i remember there were diagrams like these which were updating in real time how hot the engine was each part of it and so yeah um it's amazing just how detailed it is so this is what's tempting me to get back to explain and it has charts it has uh like you know how it is with the mfd where you have like an upper part and a lower part the cj4 has this right and the cj4 kind of has this a bit um you kind of have it has it basic mode this one is full on you can have like different windows in the upper versus lower and then you have the chart even the scrolling of the chart feels like it's the real plane like if you watch um premier one driver when he's flying his um uh what's the name of the plane premier one a right it has the same avionics panel and then he has chart there when it's scrolling the chart it has the same um, behavior it's so close to how the real life part is and it's going to be releasing in two days or three days depending on where you are um, and there are streams in his channel i have been checking them out i am getting very tempted the autopilot he sampled the autopilot it's so fluid it's so capable and uh it's able to follow even like ltv approaches with curved rnav approaches like this one it's able to follow all of those that's all of the accurate stuff there so if this was in msfs no doubt i would buy this no matter the cost but this is an explain so that's uh it's preventing me a bit it, there's still a like a gap in there like am i do i want to jump in back to explain to experience this beauty uh, i'm not sure if i'm willing to take that plunge but it's tempting me it's really tempting me so yeah uh, to be honest this level of detail is a bit too much for me right and I, I don't really understand this stuff so i probably would never load it up but just the fact that it's there it's really as close as possible to the real thing is something that really just blows my mind what is this on the right oh it's this is the apu <laughs> oh my goodness right this is, what is this vacuum line and yeah all of these all of the values update in real time and you can load them up because in explain you have like a menu and you can load like separate windows in there so yeah that's when we say study level so it's how some people have come to expect it from this developer but how much will it cost that's a good question yeah they have not released it yet the tbm the same guys from them i think i bought it for 60 60 euros or 60 usd i can't remember it it's pricey it's really pricey yes i hope so rough i really hope so too because it's just so it's a real thing right it's the real thing like they're there when they were streaming and people were asking questions it's like if the real fms can do it this one can do it so they programmed it to the letter it's amazing uh, we'll see um, so if you see me streaming explain anytime soon maybe next week and you probably have your answer 
<laughs> we'll see if I'll take the plunge. Okay, let's have a look here. Let's get back to reality. <laughs> Our reality. But yeah, for flying, right? You don't need that level of detail with each wiring programmed in. But just proper flight dynamics and uh, proper autopilot is good enough for me. So this sim, not bad, not bad. Still quite a ways to go, but it's getting there. How are the winds like? They look like they're coming from the east, northeast still. If it's the same with that airport, then we can probably Let's have a look at the approach here. Select approach, uh, 1, 6 or 3, 4. Mm, there's no good runway, is there? But 3, 4 would be best because it's going to be literally a straight in approach. Let's go and program that in. Let me get back to chat in a bit, just loading this up. Good. Tend to look more out the window than at the FMS. <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. Any other planes are a big fan of? Um, I have two main favorites. Well, I guess you could say three or maybe four. My top two are definitely the Arrow. Well, the Turbo Arrow. Arrow or Turbo Arrow is the same for me. They're great. And then the Kodiak 100. So those two are a kind of in the top two positions. I'm not sure which is my favorite. They're very close together. So it depends on my mood. If I like steam gauges, I'll fly the Arrow. If I want more procedures and GPS, I'm going with the Kodiak. So those are my top two. Top three is the DC-6. And then maybe top four is the CRJ or the CJ-4. I'm not really sure which one. But yeah, and top four is a bit uh, not as um, sure. Same for you, really. Yeah, the, the DC-6 actually I want to fly again. It's just that it's so old school. So uh, it's a bit more like a vintage vibe, not something you would use every day. But then again, it's fun. So maybe we'll get back to the DC-6. That might be a good idea, actually. I haven't flown it in a while. I love the, the, the feeling of the shaking dials as you start the engine. Right? It's a TBM-9 there. 30,000 feet. Oh, yeah, that's true. The Milvis Turbo Porter for me. Hmm, that's a good point. I don't have it in my top list, but maybe it should be. Yeah, definitely the arrow. When I flew the arrow yesterday, during when I recorded the, the series, I realized how much I missed it <laughs> because it really feels different. And it, the, the, the feeling on the yoke and the feeling of the dials as you try and fly with the steam gauges and just that classic vibe without being too old just gives you that fully immersive environment it's amazing top of descent coming in uh, three minutes 865 feet per minute sounds good just take the autopilot actually no i would want to hand fly this just so it's a bit more exciting the Seneca. I was getting very tempted of flying that, of buying that actually. I held off on it because the autopilot seemed a bit, um, it's, it's, it's default autopilot right? So the kind of the, the plane jerks when you turn on the autopilot the first time, things like that. Sometimes it loses track of the flight plan. Hmm, right. Yeah, the Carinado, I really like their Mooney. I bought the Mooney, I really enjoy it. Has that vintage vibe as well, but like a sports car vintage vibe. Yours are the Hawk, the Milvis Porter. Third one is a hard one, nice. The Hawk would be in my top list if only I could handle it. Because <laughs> it's, it's modeled so detailed, but 
yeah it's too much for me I'm not able to maximize it I would fly it like a 172 would be a, a disgrace <laughs> for me ah I see what you mean yeah yeah it wasn't much uh, there wasn't much choice yet back then huh that might be true fly money yeah i think from a practical point of view having a glass cup with these days is very um optimal right because you have lots of the, the information all in a glance like this instead of having to read six dials but then some people get used to it i guess it depends on where people get used to yeah yes i wouldn't be surprised if it was caused by that oh speaking of hawk someone is on the hawk Jamie right there Ooh. yes the hawk is very nice I, I tried it out for a couple of times let's get down here altitude selector to around 1000 feet actually we can go down to zero and then just turn on VNAV so that it will descend on its own yeah let's try to do the autopilot here test it a bit and then let's hand fly it when we're close for you the hawk is better than the arrow yeah probably if you are a if you're into those jets if you can handle them and it will be worth it for you yeah I, I guess it's more a matter of taste from that point of view i think in terms of the build quality they're really up there but in terms of which kind of plane you prefer to fly i think that's the only question then pulling back on the throttle here so we don't overspeed vfr into imc conditions the g1000 practically holds her hand that's true yeah synthetic vision and everything right yeah and if you guys haven't seen I highly recommend watching the video I released yesterday on the No GPS World Tour series. Exclamation point YouTube gets you to the channel. That's where we fly the arrow into IMC. And uh, let's just say my instruments had a failure at the last possible moment. <laughs> so those team gauges uh, failed me. But I think it was more of a sim issue more than anything. There's the runway. Hawk has better audio and texturing. Ah, 8K versus 4K. I see. Yeah. It, it does seem like they learn quite a bit, right? Because they, the Arrow is a an earlier product from them. And they since then they learned so many other things and looks like they applied that to the hawk so that makes sense that in terms of build quality the hawk is actually higher keep on improving vfr imc right that makes sense so it's really hard to predict the weather okay i armed the approach do our checks guys it might, might be a bit late here actually didn't release my harness okay that's fine turn on the aux fuel pump selectors are in under carriage we have flaps yeah we can go for flaps 10 degrees mixture propeller full forward switches let's turn on our landing lights bypass on as well harness is on okay it's only the the uh, the flaps that we're missing let's turn off the autopilot yo damper and flight director slide this on our own good let's go for a second notch of flaps Go for full flaps. And our approach speed would be 
I'm not sure, but I think 72 will be our VRF. So let's get close there. It's getting windy, and suddenly the winds are coming from the left. Yikes. Okay. It's fine. A bit of power in. We're descending too fast. There it is. It's more like it. Let's get back on the glide path. There we go. Only 3 4 with a bit of crosswind to the left. Nothing too dramatic though. There we go. Nice. Bear bit. Oh, floating. My bad. Landing time logged. Let's go reverse. Where is the ramp? No ramp, I think. No, there is one here at the left. Okay, good. Let's continue on. Let's get back into reverse here to slow us down. I think it wants us to go and make a U-turn, face the runway. So let's do just that. Strobes off, landing lights off, taxi on. Flaps up. Fox fuel pump to standby. There it is. Cricket. Okay. Clean up the plane. I think we're good. No more lights. Except the beacons. Yeah, I think we're good. Phone the jet development. Yeah, I think I followed the engine off time logged. Flight is finished. It has been monitored by on air. I think I followed the uh what do you call it? The, I joined the Discord server for that, but I have not been up to date. Is it progressing quite well? Okay, looks good. Alternator, generator off. Beacons can go off. And we are good. Just in time. There we go, thank you. And you guys can go board now. BFR to IMC, spatial disorientation. Yes, that's true. That's so dangerous. I had that in the flight. Almost ended in a disaster. There we go. Good. All right. Happy. Let's have a look how on air treated us. It's the same vertical speed, really. Same exact one. Interesting. Well, I, I won't, I won't, uh, I won't refute it. Comfort, safety, air handling. Okay, we have everything good. And we have all of these finished. Nice. Let's see if we earned any money in the first place. Yeah, that one I'm really looking forward to. The, how do you call that? How do you pronounce that even? The Bay 146. <laughs> Probably not. I don't know. But yes, I'm really looking forward to that too. Is that a twin? Turbo prop as well. I can't remember. It's a twin engine, I'm sure. Can't quite remember how it looks. What is that outside? Is that rough? Here's someone. Oh, yeah, there he is. There's Max as well. There's rough just landing. Very nice. GG, man. It's a jet. Ah, there you go. Thank you. And from what I remember, it had some pretty old school dials, right? Goodness. Just Flight will have their hands full there. That's something that I think I can get into. Yeah. Four jet engines. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. 
I think they have that product released for explain was it another sim and then they also want to bring it to this okay so let's have a look if we earned any money here Where did we start? Um, I guess here, right? So we loaded up. We didn't really load up, so we started here at 391.7, 405, 391. And then we had all these things, and we ended up with 406, 366. Okay. So we earned like a thousand more. Nice. It's actually pretty good. But aside from earning money, the big thing is actually for me this one, the level. Increasing the level in here so we can get more skill points and unlock better jobs. Maybe the reputation as well, I'm not sure how the reputation comes into play. But I'm guessing the availability of jobs is dependent on that. I guess, good progress. Thank you guys for joining me on this on-air flight. Had fun flying with you guys and talking about things to come. Let's see how it all turns out. Happy New Year. Let's end the stream here for now. And uh, yes, probably not going to be a stream on Friday, but I will keep you guys posted. Depends how the booster side effects turn out. I also shut down his engine. Very nice. It just works. Cool. Right? So thanks. For and have a good one, guys. Don't see fang, everybody. Stay safe. Catch you soon.